so now time for our dinosaur of the day, Stegoceras, which was a request from Will via email, so thank you, Will. Stegoceras means horned roof. It's a pachycephalosaur dinosaur that lived in North America during the late Cretaceous, and it was first named in 1902 by Lawrence Lamb, though the bones were first found in 1889. And when Stegoceras was first discovered, scientists thought the bones were belly ribs, which were not found in other ornithischians, but now these bones are thought to be ossified tendons. The type species is Stegoceras validum, which is based on 40 specimens found in the Belly River Group of Alberta, Canada. And between the 1920s to 1945, Stegoceras was actually thought to be Trudon, because they had similar teeth, but then better specimens of Stegoceras were found. Like many other dinosaur species, there used to be more Stegoceras species, and this includes Stegoceras lambi, Stegoceras sternbergi, and Stegoceras brev, but these were later assigned to other genera. In 1983, Stegoceras browni was renamed Ornitotholus, but it's now actually considered to be a juvenile of Stegoceras validum, and this is based on an analysis of the cranial dome ontogeny. In 1990, Mark Goodwin described the skull of an adult Stegoceras, but the skull was large for Stegoceras. In 2003, Robert Sullivan wrote a review of the fossils found and thought that it was distinct enough to be named Hansuesia sternbergi. But a more recent study by Ryan Schott and David Evans argues that the skull is an adult Stegoceras, even though it lacked nodes in the back of the skull, which is seen on a younger Stegoceras. They're not sure why it doesn't have the nodes, but it's possible that this just changed with age. In 2011, a study in PLOS One called Cranial Ontogeny in Stegoceras validum, Dinosauria pachycephalosauria, a quantitative model of pachycephalosaur dome growth and variation, showed that the skull changed with age and ornithothosis brown eye was definitely a juvenile of Stegoceras validum. But also in 2011, a new valid species of Stegoceras was named by Stephen E. Jasinski and Robert M. Sullivan called Stegoceras Novo Mexicanum, based on two partial skulls. Stegoceras Novo Mexicanum was only about four feet long compared to Stegoceras validum, which was over six feet long. Stegoceras in general is a more common, better known pachycephalosaur, and it's part of the group Marginocephalia and Pachycephalosauria. They probably evolved from Hypsilophodon, which we talk about in episode 28, and bones have been found in Alberta, Canada, and New Mexico. Stegoceras validum was about 6.6 .6 feet or 2 meters long and weighed 22 to 88 pounds or 10 to 40 kilograms, about 4 feet tall or 1.2 meters tall. Stegoceras was bipedal. It may have gone on all four feet, though, to look for plants to eat. They had small teeth that were curved with serrated edges, which again is similar to Trudon and why it was thought to be Trudon for so long. Their legs were three times longer than their arms, and they had an S or U-shaped neck. Stegoceras had round forward-facing eye sockets, so they probably had good vision and binocular vision, and it was possibly a herding dinosaur. Other dinosaurs that lived by Stegoceras included Albertosaurus, Myasaurus, T. rex, Ankylosaurus, Parasaurolophus, Corythosaurus, and Dryptosaurus. Stegoceras had a large brain that was in a thick dome about 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters thick, and it was divided into two parts. The dome was smooth, and males had thicker domes than females, and older Stegoceras tended to have thicker domes than younger Stegoceras. In 1981, the Journal of Paleontology published a morphometric study of the cranium of the pachycephalosaur dinosaur Stegoceras, which measured the brain cases of 29 specimens and found that what was once thought to be two types of Stegoceras was just male and female, and that's when they found that males had thicker domes than females. Originally, scientists thought that male Stegoceras rammed their heads together like bighorn sheep or musk oxen, but in 1997, some paleontologists said that the dome was not large enough for that kind of impact, and it would not have worked unless the heads hit at just the right spot. Also, their head, neck, and body would have had to be in a horizontal line to transmit stress, but scientists think that their necks were S or U-shaped. An alternative is maybe they were flank butting instead, which involves moving the neck and rotating the head and not seriously trying to injure their opponent. They also had a bone rim above the eye that may have protected its eyes. And Mark Goodwin from the University of California, Berkeley, analyzed pachycephalosaur skulls and found no evidence of healed scars. And he found that the skull bone is porous and fragile under pressure. So he said that they probably would have killed each other if they had participated in these fights. 
But in 2011, Snively and Theodore analyzed CT scans of Stegosaurus phallidum skulls and found that they could have headbutted based on this extra layer of dense bone in the middle of the dome, which would have been extra protection. So Eric Snively and researchers published a study in PLOS One that showed that Stegosaurus could have headbutted if it wanted. This was in the study called Common Functional Correlates of Head Strike Behavior in the Pachycephalosaurus Stegosaurus Phallidum, Ornithischia Dinosauria, and Combative Artiodactyls. It's a mouthful. So Eric and his team did CT scans on modern animal skulls in Stegosaurus, then made a virtual simulation showing beasts going head-to-head, and they found that its brain was more protective than bighorn sheep and musk ox again because of this extra layer of dense bone in the middle of its dome, in addition to a stiff rind outside with spongy material that can absorb energy and keep them conscious when they're butting heads. He also said there are, quote, alternating layers of stiff and compliant bone in the domes, almost as if they are wearing a double motorcycle helmet. So, Stegosaurus may have butted heads. They may have done this to attract mates. Still, even though the study found that the domes could dissipate impact forces, it doesn't prove that they actually rammed their heads. They may have still flanked each other by swinging their heads into each other's sides instead. Stegosaurus was a heavy breather. In 2014, Anatomical Record published Jason Borg and his team's study that showed that Stegosaurus cooled its brain by breathing. It breathed like a bird or reptile and took long, deep breaths. This is based on a CT scan, and breathing helped cool its brain by cooling blood vessels in the brain. Also, Stegosaurus may not have had nose hairs like modern reptiles, so they would have had a lot of mucus to avoid inhaling small airborne objects. Dinosaurs in general didn't have nose hair, so they would have needed mucus. Does that mean they had a lot of boogers? (laughs) Possibly. (laughs) Jason Bork and his colleagues scanned the Stegosaurus skull and found these things called turbinites. And these are intricate structures in the nose that help cool the blood and prevent water loss. They ran virtual air through a 3D model of the dinosaur's nose to see how the turbinites altered airflow. And that's how they found that it acted as a cooling system. So the air breathed in, cooled the warm blood inside before flowing to the brain, which helped them keep cool when running away from predators, probably. Because dinosaurs were so large, overheating would have been a major issue, although... Stegosaurus is a relatively small dinosaur. This still would have cooled its brain. Stegosaurus also had a good sense of smell that it would have used to sniff out predators, mates, and food. I believe you can see Stegosaurus in the first Lamb Before Time. They would have been the two dinosaurs that are headbutting, and Sarah, the Triceratops, accidentally gets in between them and runs away scared. They might be a Pachycephalosaur, though. I couldn't confirm that. So again, Stegosaurus is part of Marginocephalia, which means fringed heads, and that's a clad of ornithischians that were herbivores, both bipedal and quadrupedal, with bony ridges of frills at the back of the skull, and they lived in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Stegosaurus is also part of Pachycephalosauria, which means thick-headed lizards, which is also a clad of ornithischians, and they lived in the late Cretaceous in North America and Asia. Pachycephalosaurs were herbivores with thick skulls, and they were all bipedal, and some had dome skulls, while others were flat or wedge-shaped. 